Hello, welcome back to Your Money Mind. Today is day 28 of the show. And today, here's your host, Peter Dunn. And I am the assistant host, Ted DeBed Dunn. See you on the bright yeah. side of the apocalypse. Bye. Um, my son just said, see you on the bright side of the apocalypse. That was not cleared with management. Where do you hear that? That's crazy. Anyway, hi, everybody. What a weird start to the show. I'm Peter Dunn. Pete the Planner, CEO of Hey Money, Your Money Line. Apparently, a pretty great parent, too. Uh, hey, today's day 28 of our daily live stream. We're doing 30 live streams in 31 days because of Easter. I hope you had a great Easter. Uh, right after this show, I, of course, will be going out uh, essentially to purchase uh, Reese's peanut butter eggs at a significant discount. I'm kidding. I would never do that to endanger myself, but I probably will do that. All right, here's what we're focusing on today on the show. We're wrapping up this entire program today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. Uh, our goal was to help you cut $500 a month of spending. Why? Uh, because even when the virus goes away, hopefully, slows in the next month and a half, the economy is not a light switch that'll be flipped back on. Unemployment numbers are going to stay relatively high. You know, Pay raises, bonuses, overtime, those sorts of opportunities aren't really going to be there for a lot of folks. So y'all need to get lean. We want you to press reset on your finances. If you've ever felt like your financial life was put upon you by someone else, you look up and you've got all these expenses and obligations. And you're like, well, how in the world did this happen? Why don't we just use this? Hello, good day, Lori. Uh, why don't we just use this as an opportunity to press reset? And finally, we wanna stop guessing. Today, specifically what we're doing around stopping guessing is we're gonna identify the strengths the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats that exist in our finances. Yeah, if you ever went to business school, we're doing a SWOT analysis on your financial life. If you need help with that, you can always go to callheymoney.com. That's callheymoney.com. And uh, go to the blog there too. So if you go to the blog there, you can see all 30 days of our daily live stream. It takes about 20 minutes a day, gives us some tips, gives you uh, synopsis, synopses of uh, each day on the blog. And so you can uh, watch those videos, uh, passive aggressively uh, email those to your spouse, you know, those sorts of things. And you can also use the offer code cheese and get 10% off services with the Hey Money team. Many of you over the last 28 days have taken us up on this offer and we're really glad you did. Uh, we're getting a lot of good results, helping people work through these challenges. You know, I, I, I usually leave the plug at that, but let me go a step further here today. Because I've been telling you for three weeks, almost four, well, four weeks, that it's going to get weird. Whether you realize that or not, it's going to get weird. And by weird, I mean really tight and bad for a couple months. It is worth $17.99 a month with offer code cheese at callheymoney.com to have a professional put you in the right position. I'm not kidding. Most of the people, I would arguably say all of the people in our organization and all aspects of marketing and the advice side and everything, business development, we're all in a good financial position because we listen to the experts of our own team and we want to do the same for you. All right. Today we are working on, oh, hello. Good to see your face, says Patsy Buxot. Well, hello, Patsy Buxot. It's good to see your name. I don't know if it's good to see my face, although I did shave this morning. Uh, I was on the news this morning at 8.15, uh, the local uh, Fox affiliate in the central Indiana area. And then minutes after leaving air, I had a woman uh, send me a nasty tweet on Twitter calling me a jack wagon, <laughs> which don't get me wrong. That's a, I love, I don't like name calling, but if you're going to name call someone, I like something creative like that. It's not really profane. It's kind of funny. And uh, I mean, she was still still wrong with her criticism. But anyway, doing a SWOT analysis today on your financial life. What does that mean? Okay. Anytime, uh, you know, you want to have an organized strategic approach to change and to truly understand a situation you're in, you need to look at it from all angles. Years and years and years ago, arguably decades ago, business people came up with this concept of what is called a SWOT analysis. SWOT stands for looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So that's what we're gonna do today. 
if we wrap up this 30 day period, we have two days left, of course, after today, I want to take the time to go through what uh, or could be your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Let's do it. First, your strengths. This is uh, when you look at your financial life objectively and you say, okay, what do I have to build on? You know, what's the foundation that I can survive this the economic downturn? Here's some possibilities. Maybe it is your income. Maybe your income is what is so great about you, right? I know people like that. I know people that are, are honestly a disaster other than their income and their income is great. And so that's a strength, right? Just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean things are good. But on a relative basis, if you make a lot of money, it could mean that's the best thing going for you. It's a big difference there, right? Just because you make a lot of money doesn't mean things are good. But the fact that you make a lot of money could be the best thing going for you. Second is savings. Let's say right now, um, you know, you're on shaky ground like the rest of humanity financially, but you scrimped and saved and made really tough choices over the last several years. And you've got, I don't know, six months, 24 months of uh, expenses set aside. Mrs. Planner and I actually had a conversation this morning about, you know, what it takes for us to live monthly, you know, and, and again, how much that translates into uh, in terms of emergency savings. I recommend you do that every once in a while. I mean, at the beginning of our program, we talked about emergency funds. But there's nothing wrong with every few weeks just going back, looking at your expenses again, seeing how those expenses divide into your emergency fund and see how many months you have to go. It builds confidence. That's the whole point of identifying strengths. It's so you, by the way, am I the only person that says, oh, Katie caught it before I caught it? Stanks. Stanks. <laughs> All right, we're going to change that. Everybody, we can't have everybody in a, uh, identifying their stanks. I'm going to blame Ted for that. I'll be honest. It's the, it's the eight-year-old. You know, you can't read that well. The reason we identify our strengths is so we can build confidence. Next, and stanks. Lifestyle. Maybe your lifestyle is the issue. The good issue. Maybe you live so inexpensively, so frugally, that no matter what life throws at you, you can handle it. Now, let's get weird here for a second. What I found over the last 20 years is sometimes a person who isn't prepared to retire actually is able to successfully retire because they don't live an opulent lifestyle. They may only receive Social Security retirement income as their only income source in retirement, but it may be enough because they don't live on much. And I think that's a beautiful thing. It goes back to what we talked about last week. Most people think they will be able to successfully retire because they will have had a lot of money. I don't agree with that sentiment. I think anyone who is able to successfully retire likely does so because they don't need a lot of money, which is to say your lifestyle matters, whether it's your strength or your strength. Strength feels like it should be a word, does it not? It is now. Let's take a look at your weaknesses. Now I'm going to look at every word on this as we go. Let's look at the things that it's really easy to bury your head in the sand over. I, I, I think about all areas of my life, relationships, fitness, nutrition, faith. It's important to look where you struggle and say, is there anything I can do to mitigate the risks associated with this weakness? There's nothing wrong with that. It's a really mature thing to do. I, look, I, I uh, believe it or not, I speak for a living sometimes. I'll get on a stage in front of thousands of people and I'll talk for an hour or two and I get paid to do that. And I've done it for a very long time and I enjoy it. I view it as entertainment as much as it is education. But you better believe the second I'm back on the plane, on the way home from whatever city I'm in, I'm sending an email to the director of whoever hired me and I'm saying, thanks for having me, blah, blah, blah. Can you provide any critical feedback of the work I did for you today? Why? Because I want to know my weaknesses. I care more about my weaknesses than I do anything else. And I encourage you financially to understand that too. But here's what we have done since we were very young children when it comes to our weaknesses. We sort of laugh them off, 
right? We say, oh, I got a C on that test. I didn't study. <laughs> I did it. That's what I used to do. You laugh off your weaknesses. When you're an adult, when you're a mature entity and, and their stakes are high because it's your financial life and your only two financial resources are money and time, you can't laugh off your weaknesses. You have to know what they are and face them head on. Here are the three that typically pop up. When you don't have much of an income or in today's day and age, it means you've lost your income because of unemployment. That is a weakness. If your current situation is the fact that your income is in the pot, I was going to use a different word than pot and then I was going to go in the toilet because it's a derivative. Anyway, let's say your income's not good right now. That might be a big weakness. Let's say you have no savings. You know, stimulus payments are theoretically hitting this week. I have heard of some people already get paid Saturday and today and tomorrow uh, and, and on to the 15th when, when people are going to get these stimulus payments. Maybe you use that to strengthen, strengthen, can't talk today. One of your weaknesses, which is your savings account. And then finally, lifestyle. I will say this, more than anything, if I had to look at America's financial weakness as a whole and say, this is our issue. It's lifestyle. It's lifestyle choices. It really, really is. This sounds judgmental. I assure you it's merely an observation of years of doing this. We, because I'm included in this, I'm not alone. I'm not shouting down from the mountain. I'm climbing the mountain of behavior with you. We tend to make bad financial lifestyle decisions. We tend to grow our lifestyles over time when our income grows. Because think about this for a second, okay? Let's do this. Eh, this is what I want. Let's say your strength... I could have silenced that on my computer. Also a weakness of mine. Let's say one of your strengths is income, but one of your weaknesses is lifestyle. Do you see you've just wasted one of your strengths, or stanks as they call it in the biz, and you've turned it into a weakness, which is your lifestyle. We can't have that happen. So look critically at your financial life. In fact, if you share personal finances with someone, ask them. It's a little throwback there. Ask them. A couple of weeks ago, maybe, we did how to have the perfect money conversation with your significant other. I don't know what day it was, like day 95. I don't know what day it was. Go back into the callheymoney.com slash blog and find that day talking about money with your honey bunny. They spell opportunities, right? Next, we're going to talk about opportunities. Boy, I hope I finished this. I'm just thinking about it here. Maybe I didn't. Huh. Is rest what I meant there? Oh, reset is what I meant there. You guys, I may, it feels like I did this when I was drinking or something, but it turns out I did it over lunch when I was trying to eat lunch with my kids. So, uh, number one, opportunity for you on the current climate we're in. At least you know this is live. You'll never go, you know, I don't believe this. It's too polished. <laughs> no one ever says that about my show. You, you have the opportunity to press reset. I said at the beginning of this show, sometimes you are given the opportunity to change everything and the stakes feel relatively low because things can't get any worse. I think this is one of those times. I think you can leverage the worst economic event in 100 years to significantly change your finances. And I have confidence in saying that I think you should do that. Number two, let's say you're one of those people that have a lot of stability, your income's fine, got good savings. Why not use this opportunity to increase your investment uh, holdings, to buy low, sell high? Last week during investment week, we talked about the, the fundamental goal of investing is to buy low, sell high. Theoretically, and real, uh, you know, relatively, the market is low right now. In fact, today is getting beaten up. If you were trying to take advantage, look for an opportunity and get in there and get after it, Baco. You'd go in there and buy your investments low, and so when this whole catastrophe is over, you will have made a lot of money in the form of investment returns. And finally, real estate. Now, I'm not giving you advice on this one, but it's something to consider. I think the real estate market is going to get reset. That's a fancy way for saying correct, which is also a fancy way of saying crash. I think the real estate market is going to go on a pretty big dip. When I dip, you dip, we dip. I think it's going to dip. 
And I think if you're a savvy buyer and you currently are a renter looking to buy, you've got the proper down payment, now's an interesting time. It really is. I think for most people, now is not the time to make a real estate transaction. But for the savvy buyer who is currently renting, I think it makes a lot of sense. It's also worth noting, I read a piece this morning that suggested that banks are going to increase the loan requirements or your requirements that you have to satisfy before they give you a loan uh, for home buying. 20% will be the minimum down payment and you have to have a 700 point, 700 point credit score or more. I'll be honest though, and this is where people will get mad at me and I'm okay, I can handle it. I'm a big boy. I'm really a big boy. I've been eating a lot over the quarantine. Uh, I, I don't, I think you should always have to have a 700 point credit score to buy a house. It's not because I'm some weird elitist or anything like that. It's because I know that buying a home isn't all that it's cracked up to be. And that there's a lot of expenses involved that you never expect are going to happen. And if you haven't shown your ability to handle major purchases and debts, then you know what? It's probably in your best interest to not be a homeowner. People don't like hearing no, by the way. Like maybe there's something in, in front of you right now or inside of you, I should say. When I said that maybe home ownership's not for you if you don't have a 700 point credit score, you were like, ugh, what's he have to say? I I'm right about this. I think one of our big challenges, and we're talking about it in the next couple of days, whether it's tomorrow or Wednesday, is the attitudes of Americans when it comes to money. I think if anything gets reset in this, I think it needs to become down to our own individual perceptions and, and perspectives around money. Me too. Not, I'm not saying you guys need to change. I'm saying we need to change. And I think honestly, home ownership and what it means and what it takes is one of those things. God, let's see if I did threats right. You know what? I didn't. I didn't even complete this one. So I'm just going to leave it here. I knew I did that. When the show started, I thought, man, when I get to the threats bullet point screen, I'm pretty sure I didn't complete it. And here we are. You and me, baby. All right, what are the threats to your situation? Number one, I think employment instability. Maybe you currently have a job, but you are nervous that it could disappear like that. By that, I mean like sometime in the next 90 to 120 days. <sighs> yeah, I mean, that's the biggest threat right now, your income. What's another big threat? Um, once you lose your job, staying unemployed, until the job market picks back up. Beyond that, honestly, I, other than health, I don't see a lot of threats going on right now. Income is everything right now. Having steady employment is everything. I think if you are currently on unemployment and you don't get re-employed, by the time uh, the four month extension of the unemployed, the enhancement of the unemployment benefits runs out in July, I think that is another threat to not find re-employment in July, by July. And I think there's a tremendous number of threats to business owners. People like to think that business owners are loaded for some reason. Now, some are, but a lot of business owners aren't. In fact, a lot of business owners make less money than some of their employees. They just happen to have equity in the business, which isn't worth anything when the business is failing. So I think there's a lot more small business threat going on out there than just about anything else. I'm kind of half embarrassed about my typos and incomplete work on today's show. <sighs> Dare you say it's one of my weaknesses? Nah, you know, it's okay. I think you'll forgive me. All right. Hey, go to callheymoney.com if you want help with this stuff. My team would be glad to help you. I really like them and I think you will too. And uh, use the offer code cheese for a 10% discount. That's my gift to you. Sorry. Happy Easter. I hope you had some time with your family. If you don't celebrate Easter, I still hope you had some time with your family via the internet. I don't want people getting together. Bobby, thank you for telling me it's all good. And thank you for that smiley face emoji. It made me feel good. All right, everybody, two more days. No more, I'm sending you on, a, I'm sending you a big set of instructions on how to get through this. And I'm gonna check back in, in with you every once in a while. Don't forget to go to wherever you get your podcasts and search the Pete the Planner podcast. A new one comes out tomorrow morning. I just edited it and send it to my boy, Brent. He's taking care of it from there. So, all right, everybody, make it a good one. We'll see you tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time.